name is Sam, and today I am fixing to talk to you about building your own vintage wardrobe. Now there are lots of different components, lots of different things to keep in mind when you're starting a vintage wardrobe, and too much to talk about today. So I'm actually going to do a series of videos talking about all the different parts that you might need to think about. And I know other folks have done that before, but sometimes if you see it in a different way, it clicks with you. I'm a very visual person, so I'm going to show tons of examples to you today. Examples of what? Today, I want to talk to you about finding your own vintage style, whether that is a, a type of an epitome of a style of a certain age, or perhaps just a certain look that maybe even be carried throughout different time periods. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you all these different time periods and the style that's epitomized by them or the one that makes you think, oh, that's the 1930s or something like that. So we are going to play in my closet today and I'm just going to go ahead and jump right in. I'm going to start maybe further back than you think of as vintage. Maybe you'll think of this as antique, but this is a popular time period and one that I particularly love. Um, I'm going to show you an example here on my mannequin Lucy. It is the Edwardian period. Lots of people think that this looks like Victorian, but Victorian time period is actually more the period of our Civil War, so think big hoop skirts. Edwardian, Victoria's son, came afterwards. We're looking at a, a slimmer silhouette instead of hoops, more petticoats, a fitted top with a nipped in waist and a long full skirt. Lots of times with a really nice embellishment at the waist to show those those corseted waists that were so tiny during that time period and lots of just beautiful and elegant embellishments. Um, this is a style that I wore a lot when I was growing up simply because my family has a lot of this period of clothing that has been passed down and so I used to play in it, wear it to school, all kinds of things. This is another beautiful example, a silk dress with lots of beautiful nut embroidery. Um, this was one of my great grandma Brashear's dresses. Um, I kind of categorized this um, late 1800s to 1910s as the romantic period. It's just a nice flowy look. I think of it as Anne of Green Gables and a room with a view. Just a, a very lovely romantic period. And the great thing is if you can't get your hands on authentic vintage from this period, though you will find pieces, especially on eBay, sometimes in flea markets, sometimes if you ask family members, and that you can coordinate into your wardrobe, um, there has been a lot of copycatting this look through the years. And I'm going to talk about in each time period how there are different times, especially the 80s, that throw back to these earlier time periods so that you can mix and match adding in these more modern pieces with your vintage. Um, Laura Ashley is a very big person that, that kind of does this prairie or Edwardian sort of look. This is a modern example from the 80s and you can see it has the long flowing skirt, a beautiful top with the embroidery uh, buttons down the back and you can find these uh, examples at thrift stores and places like that for a lot cheaper price than true vintage. So if you are looking at the Romantic period or the Edwardian period, that's something for you to think about. Um, then we're going to go on to the 1920s. And the 1920s was a time of drastic change. We see that during this time period the skirts hit at least ankle preferably the top of the shoe, but in the 1920s things radically changed and we had the flappers. Skirts climbed up to the knee or even sometimes above the knee <gasps> was scandalous. Not only that, hair. Hair that had been in sort of Gibson girl, I don't know if you can see my picture up there, looks lots of long hair up in beautiful buns and twists, suddenly got cut, bobbed to the chin. So this was kind of a scandalous time period. This is an authentic flapper dress from the 1920s. This was my great aunt Jessie's and this was in her trousseau when she was married and they went on their trip overseas to Europe. Isn't that exciting? But this is a style um, from the 20s and what epitomizes this time period 
is, <laughs> I like to think of it as the pillowcase era. There's not a whole lot of fitting. There is no delineation for the bust, for the waist, or for the hip. This is a hard time period for most people to pull off, unless you're like Twiggy. And think about that. When Twiggy came around, this basic, flowing, unfitted silhouette came back again. Things that will go around will come around. Instead of the flapper period, perhaps you were a matron, perhaps you were a mom or a grandma or someone who just thought that this was a little bit scandalous to wear the shorter dresses. This is another example of the 1920s. No delineation of any proportion, bust, waist, or hip. Just kind of a straight sack. So while this is not a very easy silhouette to wear, you're not going to find a lot of them in modern styling because they just are harder to wear than other styles. But these are two examples for, for people who like the Gatsby and Flapper era. These are two true vi vintage examples of that time period. And we're going to go on to the 1930s. Now the 1930s is famous because of the Depression. We had a great economic depression. Lots and lots of men lost their jobs. It was hard. People were starving. And there was not money to be exceedingly extravagant. The style of the 1930s is linear. You can see skirts are dropped back down. They're going they are sometimes at the knee, but usually below the knee and lower sometimes to the top of the feet again. And we have a great delineation of the waist. There is going to be a very nipped in waist on all of these styles. Um, lots of times with a tie back or something like this. This is an authentic 1930s. Isn't it adorable? It makes me think of Minnie Mouse for some reason. But this style is very iconic for that time period. Linear, so think straight lines, not full skirts, um, kind of saving on fabric. This is another great example of 1930s. This is a flower or feed sack dress, and I love this so much. They would actually go to the store and buy flour, sugar, different kinds of things, and it would come in a cloth sack. And the cloth sacks were patterned in different patterns. So when you went, you would actually pick your flour according to the fabric that you would like to have in your clothing. And while this is 1930s, my mom was born in 1951, and she can remember going to the grocery store and getting to pick out the flower sacks so that she could have the pattern she wanted for her clothes. So this continued on for a long time. Depression era, you were needing to be very, very frugal. So the fact that they could reuse those flower sacks to make clothing was a really big deal. You see again the delineated waist and little caps, flutter cap sleeves, and this would have come just below the knee. So this is another example of 1930s. Then we're going to get a little bit more fancy. Here is 1930s, and this is a garden party dress, and it has a beautiful little capelet shawl that goes over it. But you can see it is cut with a bias line, so it, it falls beautifully. The clothing just drapes really lovely. Has a V in the front, a lower V in the back, fastens with hook and eyes and snaps down the side. Beautiful flowing fabric over a slip. So this is iconic 1930s. Now what do you do if you love this kind of time period and you don't find anything that is true vintage? When you go to thrift shops, you can find things that have a sort of 30s feel. This one has a very delineated waist. It has the caplet sleeves and the shorter but a little bit fuller waist. This has also a fabric that looks like it could go good in that time period. So this is just a, a modern dress found cheaply at a thrift store. But also, if you can sew or you have someone in your family who can sew, this is a beautiful 1930s looking uh, dress in a beautiful and appropriate fabric that my grandma Beeman made for me one year and I absolutely love it. So you can cheat yet again if this is a time period that you love and you have a hard time finding this era of clothing. And I will say that lots of times, of course it depends on condition, but lots of times the further in time you go back the more expensive the piece of clothing is going to be. So of course a 20's flapper dress and a 30's 
chiffon garden dress are going to be more expensive than a lot of the 50s, 60s, and 70s style clothing just because it's so much older. So there's our 1930s. Now we're going to go on to my favorite time period, which is the 1940s. 1940s, the Depression is over, however, the war is on. Throwing stuff on the floor. The war is on, and so there's a ration on clothing. And so skirts come up again. Skirts come up to just below the knee, though some of them still go down to the floor, especially evening type dresses. There is a conscious uh, effort to use less fabric. And so we're going to see a lot of A-line skirts, not the huge full ones that you're going to see in the 50s, but a lot of A-line. Um, this is one of my favorite 1940s outfits. This is a little skirt and a peplum uh, top. Peplum is just this little bit of a ruffle that comes out over the hip as a little bit of extra. It has beautiful rose patterned buttons on it and lovely trim. This is a handmade outfit and the neat thing is then of course you can wear the skirt or this with something else. But this is a very, very good example of 1940s and the A-line skirt. Not exceedingly full, just a style that we're going to see also come back later on. Here's another nice 1940s outfit. Um, beautiful rhinestone decorations on it. And I want you to look at this because this is sort of a 40s style wiggles dress, wiggle dress. The one that is, is more fitted. However, you can see that this is much looser than, say, a 1950s wiggle dress, and we're going to look at that here in just a little bit. I like the 1940s because while it is structured and fits nicely to the body, it has a little bit more give and a little bit looser than some of the later time periods. So this is a, a 1940s style dress, and here is a beautiful 1940s special occasion dress, and you would wear a blue slip of the same color underneath this, the exaggerated pockets, that's a very common thing, rhinestone decorations, and we see the cap sleeves again continued on. Side zipper, very common in the 1940s, whereas these other dresses have snaps or hook and eyes. 1940s is characterized by side zips. So that is my favorite time period right there. And we're going to go along to the 1950s which is a lot of other people's favorite time period. And it's for two different reasons. Grab that down. It seems like the people like the 1950s for two completely different reasons. Either they really love the Marilyn Monroe style wiggle dresses, which when you look at this wiggle dress, if you could see it on, you would realize it fits the bust, it fits the waist, it fits the hips, and then the skirt narrows in on the bottom. So it gives an hourglass shape. Whereas in the 1940s, you would have a more fuller at the bottom skirt. This one is going to nip in a little bit. So this is an iconic wiggle dress. Think Marilyn Monroe of the 1950s. Cute little cap sleeve with bows. And 1950s is primarily zipper straight up the back. So that's one of the reasons why people really love the 1950s. Um, here's another example of not so much a wiggle dress because it's longer, but a more closely fitted dress. Bows were very, very big during that time period. So that is another beautiful 50s style dress. This is actually one of my few retro or reproduction uh, vintage look dresses. So this is Hell Bunny, and I absolutely loved it because it's gingham. I have such a weakness for gingham. But what lots of girls love about the 1950s is full circle skirts so that they can put a bunch of petticoats under there and have this cupcake effect. So fitted bust, fitted waist, and then a beautiful poof that sticks out at the bottom. I love this dress, but I am not much of a petticoat girl. I'm not much of a poof on the bottom. So I don't even own a petticoat or I would show you what it looks like with it. Beautiful wide full skirt. But that's not me. I'm more of a 40s girl silhouette, and so I just wear it with a, a little small slip underneath it and not really full. But this is an iconic style of the 1950s, and at the end I'm going to show you an example of a 40s suit, a 50s suit, and a 60s suit, so we can see um, the differences in the time period all in a type of suit, so don't let me forget. So here is 1950s. 
and now we're going to go to the 60s. The 1960s is not my favorite time period. <laughs> um, I do wear some things from it, and just like any other time period, there's going to be a gradual drift and a gradual change in styles. So you might see a dress that is from 1938 that you think, oh, that's got to be 40s because it looks just like a 40s look. Or a 40s look that is so modern for its time that actually it's what they change into in the 50s. The 50s and 60s are very close together. It's just sort of a gradual slide into this. So lots of times it's hard to tell a 50s from a 60s dress except for when it gets to about this time period. So boxier look and the waist in 60s outfits. I love a natural waist. It's very, very flattering on most people. The most flattering style for the most across the board body styles are a fitted top, a delineated waist, and a full bottom. Why a full bottom? Because it hides tummy, bottom, and hips is fantastic for everyone. So this is a great style for a lot of people. However, in the 60s, the waist started dropping back down again. Lots of times past the natural waist, nearer to the hips, which is not generally the most flattering look for a lot of women. But this is where we're going in the 60s. This is very much a, a 50s to 60s transition. Think Jackie O. So here we have a sheath dress underneath that is not super fitted. Um, it's getting to be, a, like I say, a little bit more boxy shape. And after coming from very fitted time periods, we're getting very loose and boxy shapes of jackets and suits and coats. So that's the direction we're going in. And if you'll remember our long linear lines of the 1930s, um, very column-like looks in the 60s. We're going back to that. So this is a nice zip-up-the-front um, house dress, very comfortable style, but this is a throwback to that, throwback to the 1930s. I told you everything that goes around comes around. And here we are in the 60s. This is one of my favorite skirts. Why? Because it's A-line. It throws back to the 1940s. So you can mix and match all of these styles. I love all of them. I, I will dress from all different time periods. This is just to show you, if you are thinking, I want to dress 1940s, I want to dress just like Rita Hayworth, my personal hero, then you're going to want to know what the 1940s actually looks like. But there's gonna be cheats all through here. And I can tell you that in the 1960s, wool skirt is probably going to be cheaper than a 1940s wool skirt, but it's almost, um, you almost can't even tell once you start mixing it in with all of your different time periods. So that's a really good cheat right there. I'm going to put our 1960s up, and then I'm going to show you the difference yet again through the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Let's see if we can make this sit back up there. Oh, my poor bookcase. Okay, so this is one of my absolute favorites. This is a 1940s suit. Isn't that beautiful? So A-line skirt and a very fitted top. Let me tell you, when you put this on and you button it up, it follows every curve, and yet it's so ladylike and beautiful. Lots of attention to detail, yet again, this has the rhinestone. Um, embellishment on it, beautiful covered buttons, um, nice rounded collar, 1940 suit, absolutely gorgeous. Here is a 1950 suit, lots of pleated skirts. The jacket is shorter, it's still fitted, but you can see it's almost getting to a more boxy shape. So that's a, a very good example of a 1950s uh, suit. And then 1960s, 1960s suiting, Think again, Jackie O. So here we have our sheath dress, which this one would actually be fitted a little bit more. It has a tie belt, so the waist would be fitted in a little bit more. But look how boxy and big the jacket is. And this is a very small size of outfit, actually. Um, this is my size or smaller, but when you see it on the hanger, it looks really large. So to me, the 60s 
we're getting to more a boxy, loose fit. I'm not going to go into the 70s because that is my least favorite time period. At least in the 80s, we had throwbacks to each one of these really great periods before. So this is just an idea of different time periods and different styles that are associated with them. Um, one of the best ways for you to decide what kind of style you really like is to go on Pinterest, if you haven't already, and make a board and start just randomly going through, type in vintage clothing, look at things you like and put them on the board. After a while, go back and look. Is there a certain time period that you were drawn to? Um, a certain style, a certain length? What is it that you really think, oh, I would love to wear? And start listening to your heart about what kind of clothes it is that you're wanting to acquire. Um, Thank you for listening to me through all of this rambling. I hope that there was something in here that helped you or you thought, oh, that's that time period. I love that time period. Or that was just interesting to you. My next video is going to be um, on helping you to start actually purchasing things for your wardrobe to get started. And so it's going to be about the most important thing about vintage clothing ever. It's going to be about measurements and sizing. And let me tell you, if, if you don't have a good grasp on that, you're going to have a real hard time buying vintage clothing. So please come back and watch my next video so that you can get an idea of how you can start buying things that you really, really love. Um, I also have some other videos, but they are about things like making biscuits and canning jelly because that's what I do in my real life. But what I would really love is if you would come and visit me on my blog. It is MissSamWearsDresses.blogspot.com and every week I share a different vintage outfit, lots of recipes, especially sweets because that's what I love best and just ramblings about parties and books and different things and sugar I would so love for you to come and visit me so until then I hope you have a lovely day bye